So now I was treading water, trying to grab on to anything to hang on to. And everywhere I grabbed the ice, it would break off. And I was kicking and screaming, and the fellow with the dogs was not able to get closer to me because the ice was breaking all around. And so when I finally was pretty much at the point that I, I didn't think I had very much time, my right knee hit a ledge of ice underneath the water. And I managed to get both knees up onto it. And he was able to get close enough to pull me out by my hood. And now I was up on the ice, but it was minus 50. And I was soaking wet, naturally. So he stood there and said, just stay where you are, I'm gonna go and get the dog. But I knew that if I stayed still, I wouldn't survive. And I knew that to my left was the port of Churchill, which meant that to the right was the town. And I just began to walk one foot in front of the other. Um, it wasn't a conscious thing. It was just kind of an instinctive decision to move. I, I remember thinking that if I was going to die, I would die walking. I was supposed to work that night, the night shift at the hospital, and of course the staff at the hospital said, oh, you know, don't don't come in tonight. You you need to take the night off after what you've been through. And, and then I thought, well, maybe I should just lie down. I, I am kind of tired, maybe I should have a nap. But I very quickly realized that I every time I shut my eyes, I was going under that black water. So in the end, I got dressed and went to work. And when I went to work that night, the staff all looked at me and, and said, what are you doing here? Like, you can't work. And that was when I cracked a little and I just looked at them and said, you know, I, I just feel like I need to be with these people in life. And they looked at each other and they said, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you stay. And I was there for the night because I really couldn't be alone. The first thing they needed to do was strip me down, and my parka was frozen. And even then I insisted, pull it over my head. I said, do not cut this parka, it's brand new. Unfortunately for me, the parka was big enough that they, they were able to pull it over my head. I did wear that parka for several years, and then uh, finally one of our maintenance fellows really wanted a new parka, and he was struggling a little bit financially. And so I said, as long as you, you know, you're not feel like this is kind of weird because this is the park I was wearing when I went in the river. He said, oh no. He said, I will keep that parka forever. He said, that's my lucky parka. And so he, he took over my parka. And every time anybody says anything to him about that park, he says, oh, this is my lucky parka. This is the parka that went in the Churchill River. 